Hey guys, what's up? I'm doing a video today that I've wanted to do for a long time now. Uh, now that I've used my JD5 for, what, about six months, I wanted to give my list of suggested firmware fixes for the JD5. Now, first let's talk about what has been fixed already with uh, two firmware updates for the JD5. The first one fixed an issue with panning where the footage would be kind of sticky. The camera couldn't really decide between uh, camera shake and intentional movement, so you got kind of this jittery, stuttery behavior if you're panning around. They fixed that with the first update. Now the second update that came a few months later fixed a problem with the um, in-body stabilization noise level during recording. Um, if you were taking a video or just using the camera, you, you would hear this pretty noticeable whirring noise from the IS that you would uh, you'd hear it in a quiet room more than anything. And it was loud enough that it could be picked up on the camera through the internal mics and even through a road mic, which really surprised me. But the update uh, significantly quieted that noise. It's no longer an issue with the GD5. I was really glad they did that. But there are still a few things I'd like to see addressed in updates on the GD5. And the first one is the auto ISO behavior. Now, if you've paid attention, the GH5 has some pretty powerful auto ISO parameters that you can set in the menu. You can basically control the point at which the camera will step up to the next ISO based on the shutter speed and light level. On the G85, you don't really have those options. You can either have auto ISO or I auto ISO, which kind of takes movement into account. But the bottom line is you're not able to tell the camera to be either more conservative or more liberal with how it pushes that ISO up or down depending on the shutter speed. And that could really vary pretty dramatically based on what you're doing. For example, if you're taking a lot of uh, static, you know, still scenes, you don't mind a little bit of subject blur, or you're at, you know, at night in the city and you want a low clean ISO, you can probably get away with longer shutter speeds, but if you're doing action shooting, you want the camera to really uh, err on the side of higher ISOs. So, I mean, even my Pentax K52S had different um, programs for that, either slow or fast or normal. But on the GD5, you're completely locked out for making any kind of determination on that. So that's a simple software tweak. It's on the GH5, so there's really no reason why they couldn't put that in the G85. Now, the next thing, if you've watched my videos, I've talked about this, is the sensitivity of the eye sensor. Now, this is important for the eco mode, the power saving mode, where the camera will automatically shut off if it's decided that you're not, you know, holding the camera up to your face. Um, it's a really handy power saving mode. But the problem is that eye sensor is so sensitive, even if you turn it from high to low sensitivity, which is what I did, it will still pick up um, motion if you have the camera up to your chest within like five or six inches. So what I'm having to do when I use power saving mode, which is most of the time, is I have to take my shot and then consciously hold the camera away from me and then kind of look to see that it shut off. I can't just take the shot and you know, kind of have it here or there. It, I mean, I really have to hold it away from me. So if they had an even lower sensitivity on the eye sensor, that would be really nice to have. Now, the next thing is just a further refinement of the autofocus capabilities, uh, maybe some more subject tracking functions. Again, the GH5 has a lot of this built in. It has this really cool ability on the GH5 for you to be able to set two preset focus points and have the camera uh, rack between them and it'll do this in 4k and it'll do this without um, overshooting when you get to that second point which is what it would do if you manually uh, half press the button in SAF it would uh, overshoot because it doesn't have that phase detect autofocus it has to go a little bit further back and then kind of lock in on it and that's kind of a distracting effect in video it's kind of why I like to use manual focus and video if possible. I'm actually filming this right now with my Miticon 25mm f0.95. I'm shooting it wide open, ISO 200, in um, pretty, not a very bright room, and I'm able to, uh, well, getting off on a tangent here, but I, I like this lens because it's manual focus. But if they could put some more powerful focus controls in the video settings on the G85, kind of filter down from the GH5, that is great. All right, the next thing I wanna talk about, I mean, again, I sound like a broken record, but, but some more 1080p codecs, maybe some more frame rate options, maybe some higher frame rate stuff. Uh, it, it seems like the cooling system on the G85 is robust enough that they could get away with higher frame rate video, like, 
you know, 96 frames per second or maybe even 120. I mean, considering the Sony A6500 and I think even the A6300 can do 1080p at 120 frames per second, and that's a camera notorious for overheating issues, I really think that they could do that in the G85 without any problems. Uh, it really would be nice to have 120 frames per second for slow motion. I'd also like to see some higher megabit uh, codecs for 1080p. The G85 maxes out at only 28 megabits per second at 1080p. It's a, it's a good, clean, crisp codec, but for those who want more, it would be nice to have that instead of having to shoot at 4K, 100 megabits per second, and then downscaling down. I mean, that's a lot of extra uh, file size that you might not uh, want to have. So yeah, some of the stuff I've mentioned kind of filters down from the GH5, and you might say, well, Derek, why don't you just get a GH5? Well, despite the fact that it's $2,000 for the body only, it's a much larger and heavier camera. I finally got to handle one at uh, the Best Buy here in Columbia, South Carolina, and it, it's like a it's a big hulking camera. I mean, I could see why they did that. It's very powerful. It has no uh, cooling issues. It has a full-size HDMI port. Uh, ergonomics are great. But one thing I love about um, my Micro Four Thirds system, and one reason why I moved to it from Pentax, is just for those compact bodies. And the GH5 really doesn't have a compact body. It has a. It's not excessively large, but you can tell it's really built for the professional market and they weren't putting a heavy emphasis on size like they are with the G85. So I'd like to see some of the GH5 features implemented on the G85 in the smaller body. Um, again, the eye sensor and the autofocus issues, and of course that auto ISO, which is just, in my opinion, just a simple software fix. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'm going to follow up this video shortly with another one on what I'd like to see in the G85's uh, physical hardware successor, the G90 or whatever they end up calling it. Uh, this will focus more on hardware specs and physical features I like, I'd like to see on the successor to the G85. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. I'll catch you later.